Warning, the following video contains technical information. It is intended for an audience with a PC building background. Any non-tech personnel may become overwhelmed with the info provided in today's video. And now, the continuation of building my dream PC with Ethan O'Connor. Kicks ass, that's what it means. Welcome to part two of building my dream PC with Ethan O'Connor. Today, holy fuck, Ethan, what is all this stuff? <laughs> this right. is an overkill build. There's no reason that anyone in the world needs this much power. Except for me. So this is just your way of getting off, right? Yeah, kinda. <laughs> I mean, I guess geek-wise. There is way too much stuff here that doesn't need to go together. But, I wanted it, so I was like, hell, I'll, I'll do it, whatever. What are we looking at for price with all this stuff? Probably like 5000 Holy fucking hell. It's, it's a lot of money, but it's totally going to be worth it. I have to get a job like you, I guess. <laughs> no, it's called saving. <laughs> Lots of money. So, we'll go through the parts. Yeah, let's start off with this case here, huh? Um, this is the Obsidian from Corsair. It is the 750D. Now, the reason I went with it is, one, it's a big enough case that it can hold this motherboard and this graphics card. It has good airflow. Minus the front is a little iffy, but we'll get to that later. And it looks great. It's a fucking monster. You said this ain't the biggest one either. No, right? it's not. There's a 900D from Corsair that it's about that much taller and like that that thick. Holy it's huge. Fuck. But that's for like hard cool water cooling. So it has a radiator line on the bottom. It has another one on the side. You have all sorts of pump mounting options. This one itself is good for water cooling too, but. Most of this is going to be air cooling, except for the CPU and this badass. Oh, so yeah. we'll get to that. Oh, no, I'm later. sure. So yeah, it's a good case. Love it. It has plenty of fan filters, and it's big enough to work inside. What was the price on it? This was on Newegg. I think it's 150 bucks, but I got it on Amazon. On Amazon. On Amazon. <laughs> Fuck. For about I think it was like 100 bucks. Okay. So, pretty decent case, and I mean, it's all aluminum, too. It's steel. It's steel and aluminum. So, I mean, can't go wrong with that. There's no plastic we got all parts and whatnot. Air uh, vent up here, actually. Yeah. Whole runs the whole yep. And this is a removable fan filter, too. Oh, which is awesome. Nice. And it's magnetized, so. Wow. Yeah. Pretty nice features. Uh, building in it is going to be an awesome design. Oh, yeah. So, to go with that, I got a motherboard. Now, I went with the X99 chipset, specifically because it's the newest one that was out there at the time that I purchased this stuff. I understand Broadwell just came out and Skylake's gonna be coming out soon, but I'm more interested in power, and that's it. I want speed and power, and I don't really care. The Broadwell and Skylake and whatnot, that's not gonna be enough for me. I need to have the best. So, Right and it's not, it's not the best because they're still working on the chipset to make it fine-tuned, or what's the deal? For what? Broadwell? Well, no, I'm saying in the essence of how many cores you have, in the essence of how much power you have. Because then they have the quad core. Yeah, they only have a quad core. This is... A six core. Yeah. Up to an eight core processor. Okay. So, not that I really need that much power, but it allows for a lot of overclocking and it allows for a lot of... PCIe range, which you'll see the reason why I didn't later in the build. Okay. Now, this is a workstation class motherboard. There is no reason that a gamer like myself needs this class of motherboard, but there are features on here that I'm super excited about that I could not get on any of the other platforms that Asus uses. Such as? Such as having the ability to run four 16 by 16 by 16 by 16 <laughs> PCIe lanes and only have to use a 28 lane CPU. It has two PLX chips down here, which allows the processor and the PLX chips to allow for more PCIe lanes. Like way more than any of the CPUs have. So it basically just gives your motherboard more PCIe lanes. Okay. Which is great. Especially next year when I'm gonna upgrade again, I'm gonna put four graphics cards in here. Well, actually three because you'll see later why. Be putting three graphics cards in here, and I'm probably not going to get that much better CPU. So, this allows me to do that. What are we looking at for ports on this guy? 
ports, you mean on the back and whatnot. Yeah. We have nothing but USB 3. That is it. There are no USB 2s on this. No Thunderbolt either. Right? No. Well, yep, there's a Thunderbolt. There is. Yep. That's Thunderbolt 2 then? Yes. And I believe it is right there. So there's an internal Thunderbolt port. Internal? Yeah. So like you can get an add in card. Okay. And plug it into your motherboard and then it runs Thunderbolt. Gotcha. So it'd go in one of these PCIe lanes. Okay. But there is no like native Thunderbolt port like on the back, like a Mac. So we have a couple features that I'm super interested in. As I said, the PLX chips, which is great. And then you have seven or yeah, yeah, seven PCIe lanes. No reason anyone needs that amount, but fucking looks a lot cooler. Two, the color scheme. I kind of went with a matte black and silver build, and this was the only one that I liked that actually fit. It has tons of passive cooling. As you can see, there are tons of heat pipes through here. We got one heat pipe going through the PLX chips, under the, under the chipset, and then going up through, and all of these are fins, which allow cooling. And then the VRMs for the entire CPU for when you're overclocking, all of this has passive cooling as well. So you get a fan going over there, this motherboard's gonna stay really cool, which is great. Uh, you have things like, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 SATA ports, SATA 3 ports. I'm not running a server, so I don't really need that much, but I mean, the expansion's there, that's cool. There's an M.2 slot, which I'm gonna be using, and you have the overclocking Asus patent pending chip uh, X99 socket, which is cool because it allows great overclocking. And you will be overclocking it, correct? Very much so. I'm gonna be benchmarking this PC for the next like two weeks. So, yeah. And you're gonna let us know how that goes. Oh, of course. Okay. Hopefully I'll be doing a video on that after I figure out how far I can push both Andrew's system and my own. Yeah, that'd be very interesting. And then, well, I guess we'll go with the power supply. We have, oh, oh it's so oh, heavy. It's a little heavier than yeah. the last one. Yeah, it's a little heavier. <laughs> um, we got an AX1200i from Corsair. 1200 watts of power, pretty much unnecessary for this build, but it allows a ton of growing room. And because as the previous build with the 860, the AX860, the same fan curve applies here, except for this one it is up to 30% load, it won't turn on. Now that means like basically anything I do other than playing games and other than rendering a video, this fan is not gonna turn on. Dead silent, which is great. Unless it's needed, then she'll just ramp yeah, up. Yeah, that, yep. That's pretty fucking good. Yep, and it's platinum efficiency, so again, as the previous one that we just saw, it runs, I think, from 90, at, yeah, just below 90 at 10% and all the way up to and past 90% efficiency for 100% load. Which, again, that means less current from the wall when you're not using it. Right. Which is great. Because this system's gonna pull a lot of power, so. Is that something with the smart ramping up, and is this something that's recent, or have these been a while now? Um, it's slowly come in, but at the same time, a lot of, as I said, the reason I go with Corsair is because this type of thing has been in the works for a very long time. But as of the past couple generations of PSUs, including others like Cooler Master or whatnot, have been doing this. Okay. So it's not necessarily recent, but the efficiency that has come along with that is something that is progressively getting better. It's just something we see with these computers now. Like, you get your power, but they want to make sure you get that power efficiency, which is really like... You know, it's a, it's a huge selling point. Yeah, I mean, it really is. As I said, like, you're pulling 1,200 watts from the wall, so that's like, I, I'm not going to do the math here, but that's, I think, below 500 watts coming out of one socket through your wall. And then this amplifies it and makes it into oh, 1,200 man. watts. Because if you pull 1,200 watts from your wall, you would probably burn your house down, or apartment, or wherever. So, the ability to monitor that is great. Now, another thing that I love about this power supply is the fact that it is I. The I means that you can monitor everything. It has its own software in Corsair, which allows me to monitor how much power is being drawn during a certain benchmark or whatnot, or how the fan curve is. I can change it myself. I was gonna say, I'm sure you can ramp the fans up on there too. Yep. You can control absolutely everything huh. with Corsair Link, which is great. I love that feature, and another reason why I bought 
the cooler I got because it also has that. So, pretty cool. Right. And to go along with that, just because I could, <laughs> I got some fancy braided cables from Corsair. So, I mean, not really anything spectacular, but they just look better. They're nice and so they braided. they uh, just kind of don't get so cluttered in the. Yep. They look nicer. I mean, that's big. The biggest thing for me. Yeah. And with this power supply, I'm going to allow to change out those modular cables because this is a fully modular power supply. So all the cables that I'm not using, I don't have to put in, which allows it to look neat. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Remember in the old days of you build a PC or whatever, you're constantly tying up those cables, getting the fuckers out of the way, and it's like, oh, I don't need this freaking floppy drive cable. Yeah, <laughs> who's going to use a floppy drive? <laughs> yeah. And it's pretty nice, so I was super excited, although this type of stuff is pretty expensive. So oh, yeah, sure. Don't don't get it unless you like, <laughs> absolutely need it or something, but I'm just not, so whatever. All right, running in the system is the lower end i7 for the X99 chipset, which is the LGA 2011 version 3. Fourth gen has one, correct? Yes. It's an i7 5820K. It has 28 PCIe lanes, which is great. But again, that's why I chose the motherboard I chose so that I can get more. And this is only like 300, 400 bucks. Whereas the one above this, the 5930K, which has a little bit higher clock speed and more PCIe lanes, but it's 500 plus dollars. Then the eight core processor, the 5960X, is a thousand dollars. I don't need eight cores. This is perfect and it works just as well. Plus it's a K version, so it's overclockable. It is standard 3.3 and I think it boosts up to 3.6. Okay. And that's on all cores. And that's, this is six core you said? Yep, this is a six core okay. processor. Gotcha. Um, along with that, I got some G-Skill Ripjaw 4 DDR4 RAM. Now this is running at, I believe, 3000 megahertz and it's 32 gigabytes of it. The DDR4, reason I you can't use that though, right? I thought Skylake needs DDR4, right? That's true, but the X99 chipset or the 20, 2011 version 3 runs DDR4 and exclusively DDR4. Okay. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to go with the X99 chipset. Gotcha. Because it gives me six cores, it gives me great overclockability, more PCIe lanes, it's more powerful, and you get to run DDR4. Now, at the current point in time, minus Computex, 3000 megahertz of 32 gigs is the highest you can get for how many gigabytes this is. 16 gigabytes, you can get up to, I think, 3400 megahertz, but you know they're always pushing that every couple weeks, so I'm sure after this video is released, you'll probably see faster 32 gig kits, so. But this is as high as I could buy. This is the only one that I could find. You got the biggest one they had. Yep. <laughs> and now, for a gaming system, you don't need 32 gigs of RAM. But the reason I got it, as you'll see soon, is because of the graphics card that I purchased for this system. This is gonna be fast enough for what I'm gonna do, and it's gonna be overclockable, so I'm hoping to get 3200 megahertz out of it. Okay. Instead of the 3000, which is gonna be cool. Now, back to the reason why half this build is the way it is, is this monster of a card. Now, by the time this video goes up, I don't know if there's gonna be anybody reviewing this card, specifically because you're gonna be like, oh, Ethan, the 980 Ti is coming out, and it's a better card. Yeah, well, this is actually a thousand, well, no, this one's $1,300, give or take. It's water-cooled, and yes, the 980 Ti also has those cards, but this has 12 gigabytes of video memory, which is awesome, and it has about 20% more CUDA cores, which allows for better performance. Well, let's pull that fucker out of there. Let's take a look at it. All right. Now, the reason I said that it has 12 gigabytes of video memory is because you need to allocate your 12 gigabytes, or however many are on your card, in this case, four gigabytes, you need to allocate that to your system memory in order to run it. Otherwise, what it'll do is it'll allocate to your next source, which is your hard drive. And your hard drive is slower than your system memory, and your system memory is slower than your video memory. All right. Because this is GDDR5, which is one step faster than your DDR4. So what you need is at least 12, in my case. Because 12 
plus 12, that's 24, you still have up to 32 to run the rest of your system, like your OS and your game and whatnot. Otherwise, you'll have stuttering, otherwise you'll have issues using the card in general. Eventually it'll just crash and not work. So let's take a look at this monster. So we were looking at it earlier. Yeah. This thing's got like a freaking like a radiator grill like you have on your damn car. car. Yep. And again, overkill build. There's no reason that I need this card. But I'm planning on running 4K and it's going to be great. So I'm super excited about this. Now, again, this has 12 gigabytes of system memory. It's clocked at, I believe, 1200 megahertz out of the box. I don't remember what the boost clock is on it, but I'm planning on pushing it up to 1500 megahertz, which could be great. With this beast of a card, I should be able to run 4K 60 hertz, no problem. <laughs> which is gonna be great. And then, you know- That's you just one channel 4K or can you do dual? Well, I could do dual, but I wouldn't be able to run like two games at once, if that's what you're saying. In order to do that, you want three screens or one right. big curved monitor or okay. whatever. So, it has a radiator to cool the GPU, and you have a blower style cooler to cool the VRMs, and it even has a black, God, I can't talk today, a back plate, which also helps cooling, and it, well, it protects the back of the car, which is pretty awesome. So this I'm super excited to throw into my system. Hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have a second one, just cause. <laughs> just cause you can. Just cause I can. So, I got the last one in stock. Oh, that's another thing you were saying. There's only so many of these made, is that correct? Well, it's it's a high priced card. I'm saying that you're not gonna see very many of them. They'll so probably- cause, Just cause people won't buy them. Well, yeah, it's a yeah, freaking yeah. expensive card. There's no reason, unless you're crazy, like or you. you're like me, or you <laughs> need it, like let's say you're a CUDA developer, let's say you're a game developer, or you do a lot of video editing in which you can use that many cores or that much video memory or 3D rendering or whatnot. Oh, yeah then there's no reason to have this unless you just want it. And well, I just wanted it, so yeah. Pretty boss card, hopefully you'll be able to see the overclocking ability oh, on fuck it. it. I gotta see this thing in action when you get her done. So, that'll be fun. All right, back to the somewhat okay stuff. We have, for the CPU cooler, an H110i GT. Now, this is not necessarily Corsair's newest CPU cooler, but it is the only one in their lineup that allow that has uh, the Corsair Link, and also is a 28, a 280 millimeter radiator. So, one, it has superior cooling. I'm gonna be running push-pull on this, and I know there's like only a 2% difference in push-pull, but it's more because I can than because it's practical. And it also has the RGB lighting, which I'm super excited about, because theme build. It's probably going to be white, but whatever. So yeah, nice. interesting. Yeah. Uh, Fan-wise, now I'm not going to pick any of these up because there is a shit ton of fans. Now I'm loading this thing up. As I said, I'm running push-pull on the CPU cooler, which is four fans total. I'm going to have one fan going out the back for exhaust. I have one fan going on the bottom of the case for the graphics card. And then also, I'm gonna have two fans up front. So a total of, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine fans. Are you gonna be able to blow dry your hair with this thing, or? It's probably gonna jump off my <laughs> desk and start flying it away. That's the goal. So we, you had some grills here. Where are these, where are these gonna go on? Um, these I got just in case, and I got them specifically because at the bottom of the case, there's two hard drive bays with three, bay, or three hard drive slots total. I don't have any disk drives in the system at all. So I'm gonna just pull them out and then put fan mounts at the bottom. Yeah, all, just, all SSDs. All yep, the yep, my whole system is just SSDs. Now, with that, there are not normally people that put fans down there. You can, it's not like it's forbidden or anything and you don't have to mod it, like there are fan slots for them. But most people still run hard drives. But I'm not, so I'm just gonna pull it out and throw more fans in there. Yeah, those, the SSDs don't make much heat, correct? Just, no, they yeah. don't make much heat. There's no mechanical moving parts. It's it's all solid state. It's gonna stay pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds like a win-win to me. Yeah. So we got fan grills. So fan setup, as I said, you're gonna have two up front, and I have Noctua industrial fans. And yes, totally unnecessary for this build, but they're the only Noctua fans that are black. 
which it goes with the theme of my build. And I've always had a good understanding and or appreciation for an Optua. Not that there aren't other fan companies out there or people that make fans that are good. I just, they've always been great for me in every system I've done. So I'm not, as I said, with the Corsair stuff, I'm not going to change just because something else. These didn't have LEDs at all, huh? No. Okay. These are just straight black and the poop brown freaking rubber grommets, which help noise dampening, but I shouldn't have an issue in this case. So we're going to have two um, NF A114s, I believe. That's what it is. Yeah, Noctua, oh, A14, yeah. NF A14s up front, which are 3,000 RPM, which is the highest static pressure that you can find, basically, for Noctua. Then you're going to have two fans at the bottom. One is going to be going on the radiator for the graphics card. And then you're going to have a one next to it, and hopefully towards the end of the year I'll put another graphics card in, and I'll put that one on the bottom. Then we're going to have one in the back, which is going to be a 140 as well. And then we have the push-pull on the top, which is going to be four 2,000 RPM NF A14s. Fucking crazy. Yep. Totally unnecessary, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. So, now we'll move on to the storage. Now this is one of those things that I'm super excited about. We have, for the OS, an Intel 750 SSD. We have the 400 gigabyte version. Now this is the NVMe standard. It's supposed to be some of the fastest SSDs we're gonna have, and it's only gonna get better when more people adopt this type of technology. Now the reason I went with the PCIe version is because I don't have any place to put the thicker 750D or 750 SSD or in any bays because it's thicker. It's like an SSD, it's about the same size, you know, it's two and a half, but it's a couple millimeters thicker, so it actually doesn't fit in any slots. So for my case, this is the best choice that I could have. And price-wise, on Newegg, it was about $404 for 400 gigabytes. So that's about a dollar per gigabyte. So you're gonna get faster transfer speed than you would with a regular... Correct, SSD. this is way faster. In benchmarks, I mean, we're talking upwards of 2200, yeah, 2200 megabytes. Wow. So two gigabytes of throughput for read speeds and up to, I believe it's like 1600 for write. I'll have to see a benchmark when oh, yeah. we get her together. For sure. So this is this is fun and it comes with its own heat spreader and everything, so it'll stay pretty cool. Huh. So that's something I'm super excited about, new technology. Yeah, I've never seen something like that. Now, for games, because I'm a huge gamer, and this is unnecessary as well, I have Samsung M.2 SM9, uh, 951. Now it's an M.2 slot uh, SSD, and it's the fastest one that they've come out with that isn't using the NVMe standard, it's still using the old S or SATA 3 style thing, except this is going to be running on PCIe 4, so 3.0 times 4, so 4 PCIe lanes, again, the reason I went with that motherboard, so I have more PCIe lanes to run these things, and it has 256 gigabytes, and again, it runs just about as fast as the Intel one, so 2,000 gigabytes of read. It's fucking crazy. Did you ever think you'd see the day where you get a little card like that for your memory? That's crazy. Yep. Well, this is what they put in laptops for the most part now. Yeah, I suppose. I mean... It's a small form yeah. factor and it works. Huh. Oh, it's an OEME, so like, there's not a lot of support for it, but I have a feeling I can get it to work. Yeah. Well, that would be interesting. And then, for the rest of my storage, because I'm just fucking nuts, mm. I have three 120 gigabyte hard drives from Samsung, the same ones that are in his system, except these are the 120, and I'm gonna RAID zero of these, all three of them. So they're all just one big drive. So they're all just one yeah. big stripe drive, and I'm gonna use it for all of the rest of my games. But the problem is then, if you lose one. Yep, all of my data is lost. Yeah. But they're freaking games, so I'm not really too concerned about losing a save card. I'm more concerned about loading times and like making things as fast yeah. as possible. So, yes, it's volatile, but at the same time, oh no, I lost my save game. Too bad I have to play it again. Now SSDs are, you would say, more reliable, correct? Yes. But the only problem is that I've heard is when they fail, they fail. There's no little lead time like you'd get with a spinning drive. Correct. So that's a little scary, but it is. What do but you do? As I've said before, for SSDs, for example, Samsung, the Pro that is going in Andrew's system, 
That one has been running in Samsung's laboratory. That same drive, I mean, not that exact one, but the same drive, the 256 gigabyte one, for a year doing 4K writes constantly, and it hasn't failed yet. That's 250 or 365 days a year that it's been every second writing and reading, writing and reading, and it hasn't failed. That's fucking awesome. So I'm not really too worried about these drives failing. And then, for mass storage, just because I can, I have a 256 or 250 gigabyte hard drive for music or whatever. Huh. So that's the system. Totally overkill. I don't care. It's going to be fun. Well, looks like you got a fucking lot of work out of this. I want to let you get to it, man, and have fun. I will. Lots of fun. <laughs> all right, welcome to part two, ladies and gentlemen. This is one we all been waiting for. The beast yes. of the beast. What do we got here, Ethan? How, how did this one go for you? This one was a pain in the ass. Boom right here, yes, I named it Boom. Boom. Yeah, is a beastly machine. There were issues with it. I am using the new Intel 750 NVMe PCIe card for my boot drive. And let me tell you, running that on Windows 7, there's no support. I, do, I would install my OS on three of my SSDs just to boot into Windows so that I could upgrade everything or update this, it. This was that little card, right? That small chip? No, the NVMe drive oh, the is one, the, the, the silver, uh, silver one. one. Yep. Yeah. And the PCIe one right now is underneath my Titan X. I'm using the M.2 for all of the games that we're going to be using for the Chemlight Bandits. Okay. It's fast as hell. Now, right off the bat, I'm looking at this, are these fans on top necessary? No, not at all. <laughs> they are not necessary in any way, shape, or form. I thought it looked a little bit ugly. It does look a little bit ugly, especially because it's like poop brown on the edges. Yeah, exactly. But it came down to the fact that each one of these Noctua fans are 30 bucks a piece. I'm not about to set two of them on the side just because. I bought them so that I could put them in the system. The issue is, is that because of the workstation motherboard that I have in here, and the fact that it has two, um, eight pin power connectors on the top of the motherboard that require me to plug it in and then go through the back. There wasn't enough room for me to fit a push pull configuration on my H my H110i GT in the case. I threw them on top. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. What else can you do? Well, can, yeah. At this concern if you're buying something like this, you're not concerned about looks, right? Fuck no. <laughs> Andrews, I was concerned with looks yeah. for a little bit. And that's specifically because it's gonna be sitting in his office. I want it to look good. I want him to be happy with it. Mine, I just don't care. I'm about performance and that's yep. it. I don't yeah. give a shit. So speaking of performance, take us through a benchmark here. Well, I will. I will say right now, I'm a little disappointed in my system, specifically because my memory controller on my, um, 4820K uh, is not as powerful as I was hoping. So the RAM on here is 3000 megahertz and it's 32 gigs of it, it can't handle it. So right now I have the 32 gigs running at 2400 megahertz. It kind of pisses me off because that's like an extra 100 bucks I spent on getting that 3000. For nothing. For nothing. But next year when Broadwell E comes out, I'm gonna be getting the Extreme Edition, which is probably gonna be a thousand bucks. I'm not really too concerned about memory controller. Plus, with that, I'll be able to overclock the memory, hopefully, to like 32 or 33. But that'll take care of that, and you can util utilize it? Yeah, I will be able okay, to utilize yeah. it. Okay. The issue is, is that the 4820K, it's kind of hit or miss. Most people only are able to overclock it to about 4.4 stable, 4.5, and maybe a little bit above that. I was able to get mine stable at 5 gigahertz with 1.4 volts, but... I didn't want to run that all the time because that's a hundred millivolts more than what is recommended max. So unless I was going liquid or um, LN2 cooling, I'm not about to do that. Yeah. At least run that as my 24 hour driver. Maybe for benchmarks, yeah, fine, whatever. But I want it to be stable. Same thing as I said before, it needs to be stable. There's no point in playing a game or <laughs> rendering something and then have it fail right in the middle. Yeah. I mean, that pisses you off more than anything else. Oh, you yeah. just lost all your data. You have to restart your computer. Everything's fucked. You got to redo it. Why would you? Why? I assume you've been there. 
<laughs> With this piece of machinery, I have been there many times uh, trying to get that memory up to speed. Uh, I've tried all the agent voltage. I've tried all the DRAM voltage I could possibly pump through it. Like, it doesn't matter. It's the CPU. It overclocks like a boss, but it can't handle that amount of memory. So, oh well, whatever. It still kicks everything's ass. Oh yeah. So, we'll run through some benchmarks. Yeah, I'll see this. Um, we'll go through Cinebench first. Because why the fuck not? You can see my my CPUs right here. These are the, both the ones that I've run. So I'll just run it again, just so you can see how fast it is. So comparing this, what was Anders' old number? Or, uh, nine, nine fifty-five. Okay, just so I have some kind of frame of reference here. <laughs> you can tell it's freaking loud. <laughs> But that's rendering way faster than immediately. Yeah. yeah. See, is that what's different about Windows and Mac? Because it seems like Mac, it'll take a little while. They like do everything they can to keep those fans quiet. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's that even it? better than it was. Thirteen thirty-four. Yeah. Wow. Which honestly, I mean, there are CPUs out there that are better than that. Yeah, obviously. But for an overclocked fifty-eight twenty K, this is pretty awesome. And the fact that right there, the one that's on there, if you can see the Xeon right now, this is a 12 core Xeon. And I'm kicking its ass with six cores. So they just gave you some shit to compare it to? Yep, I mean, and most of these are old. I mean, the 4770K was the previous generation of the Haswell um, processor that is in Andrew's computer. Yeah, this is the Xeon. I wonder if that's the same one that's in the uh, new Mac Pro. No, and that's probably older, but Whatever, so that's that benchmark, so kick the ass, take names. Damn. Yeah, replace it. All right, we'll run the heaven benchmark. All right. Now this is where the graphics card shines. Right now I have it overclocked by, I think it's 120 megahertz. And it's a Titan Max, so like it kicks everything's ass. Except for the new R9, Fury X that just came out, but that only beats it by, I think, like 10 frames a second, so it's not really all that big of a deal. Although it's cheaper, so I kind of got screwed on that deal. Yeah, I'm having issues with the driver right now on this graphics card. I think I'm gonna have to um, wipe the BIOS and then uh, reinstall the, the um, drivers. Mm. Because I've been I've been having issues with it, and it's, it's not like the graphics card itself can't handle it. It's not like there's anything wrong with the graphics card, but like that black screen that you just saw, yeah, that was the driver going down, and then coming back online, which is kind of shitty considering it's a thirteen hundred dollar graphics card. I think they'd get that fixed, but then again, it's only been out for a few months, so technology matures. So it looks like we're not getting as good as we were on Anders, correct, for frames? So what's causing that? I don't know. This is my <laughs> RAID 0 array of the three 120 gigabyte SSDs. This is okay. the score that they got. So 16. All right. And 12. That's pretty good. And the random is just up the wazoo. Um, let's see. This was the sequential reads on the um, M.2 that's small. Okay. So, I mean, that's pretty damn fast. Yeah, that's really good. So, and then this is that NVMe drive. Okay, that's pretty good too. Yeah. So, kicks butt. I mean, boots like nobody's business. It's clocked at uh, 4.65 gigahertz. It's running at, I think the 2400 for RAM on uh, 32 gigs and I mean, it kicks everything's ass. I'm running 1.38 volts through it and the maximum recommended is 1.3. I bet that's, I bet that fucking hauls in rendering. Like oh, for, did you not see that? The Cinebench? Well, yeah, there's a Cinebench, but you know, until I actually do his editing with it. I suppose, I suppose that's difference? very true. Um, the only other thing that I could possibly run would be real bench. Um, We'll just benchmark it quick. 
And this will go through image editing, encoding, OpenCL, and yeah. multitasking. Try that. Shut up. Well, that's kind of cool. This is just kind of mimics opening pictures and editing them. Yep. What did this unit, all the parts, what are we looking at for damage? It's about 5,000. 5,000? 5, yeah. 5,000 plus. Is this necessary for what I use it for, which is gonna be games and watching YouTube videos? No, <laughs> this is way overkill. There's no reason anyone needs this for a desktop driver. It's the fact of the matter that why the fuck not have it? <laughs> I could pay for it, I, why the hell not? Plus this gives me tons of upgradability in comparison to my old computer, which was a i5-750. When you say old, how long ago are we talking? Like 2010 was like high end. i5 was? Well, I mean, there was an i7 above that, but like. I'd never dream of getting an i5. Well, it's not like I had a choice. <laughs> I was still in high school buying like $500 worth of parts was like, oh, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. I don't miss those days at all. Yeah, well. So so for both of these computers now, you got everything off Newegg? Yeah. That was your yeah. place of choice? Yeah. Now, some of the, as I said, I could have gone anywhere else. I might have gotten better deals, like a couple things on Amazon or a couple things on like, an XT or whatever, I could go on the actual websites for the places that I, or the uh, components that I bought. So like I could have gone to Asus and bought it off of there, or I could have bought, you know, the graphics card directly from EVGA. You know, I would have gotten a better deal, but it comes down to the fact of convenience. Right. And the fact that it all shows up at the same time. You yep. know, you don't have to worry about, let's say you have to arm a apart like I had to with my HADI it's going to one place. I only have to deal with one business, that's it. Versus having to go through five different RMA processes for a bunch of different parts. It's just easier that way. Oh yeah, definitely. So Get all your shit in one place and not fucking deal with it all, yeah. What the hell? Oh, it's a little video test here. Yep. This is, uh, is this heavy multitasking. So right now it's using handbrake, it's using OpenCL and it's encoding at the same time. So it's it's doing good, obviously, because otherwise this video would start stuttering, correct? Oh yeah. I'm just so curious, Andrew, if you had... Actually, you said you didn't do any editing on your Thing yet, but did you see if the Mercury engines opened up on that? I bet you that you could fucking color correct while it's running. Or even this, I bet you fucking haul. Oh, this will haul ass. Have it play back and potentially color correct. this would be the better computer for what you're using it for. I mean, really, it has way more power, and for video editing, this would be perfect. But when it comes down to budget and like what you're actually going to use, you don't really need more than that. So the system score is 108,091. Kicks ass, that's what it means. All right, I'll have the specs in the comments here. You guys can look at all the parts that we had. And if uh, you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll make sure to forward that to Ethan and he uh, can get back to you on it. I'm totally interested in your guys' input too because this is our first time doing something like this. And you know, if you guys wanna see more, let us know. I mean, and uh, uh, my technical director just informed me that we may have lost audio uh, earlier when we were filming the parts and stuff. Apologize for that, but you know, it is what it is and just gotta push forward here on the production level, so. Shit happens. <laughs> As you fight- you Gotta off, roll with the punches. Oh yeah, well, it's never ending. Well, thank you guys. This has been Building My Dream PC with Ethan O'Connor and uh, have a good one guys. Comment, subscribe, like,